Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Tales of Agora storytelling series. I am Sylph and we are taking a look at Catch Me If You Can, Part 1, a story behind FaZe, Shinbi, and some other heroes from Tyran Industries. Marillus Action is a game and screen recorder that offers the lowest megabytes per frame, the lowest computer resource usage, and the highest FPS recording. Check the link in the video description to learn more. Before we get into it, I would like to say that all of the art and screenshots here that you are about to see um, may not all be mine. I do not claim ownership of any of the art here, so please go and check out some of the fantastic art artists, mostly on Reddit, but also on Twitter um, that you can find out there. Tanya Paragon, um, Sneaky Brothers, a lot of other fantastic people doing fantastic art out there. Go and check them out. Catch Me If You Can by the Paragon Lore Team. Faye swallowed the last bite of her high-protein insta-slush and scanned the security intercept logs on her terminal. Apparently, Tyron Industries' security operatives were stepping up their sweeps tonight, hoping to recapture her. They must have thought the large crowds and wild costumes of a Shadow's Eve celebration would draw her out onto the streets of Ometa City. And they're right, she muttered to herself. If it had been safe, she would be out there in a heartbeat, experiencing life, food, Music. Especially music. All she'd ever heard in Tyron's bioweapons laboratory were Dr. Maximov's dreadful operas. But out here, she discovered thousands of genres, each with countless variants. Vibrant, alive, evolving. It was the only thing that had kept her sane in the last three months, two days, six hours, and about ten minutes. That was how long she'd spent hiding from Tyron security operatives crouching alone in this filthy, abandoned basement by day, scavenging for food by night, traveling via the city sewers, and trying to stay off Tyron's radar. Life outside the lab was turning out to be a non-stop party. As soon as FaZe and her friends had escaped the lab, Howitzer had gone on a destruction spree down by the port, and had picked up by Omeda PD. Zinx, meanwhile, had set FaZe up with an untraceable extranet terminal, and then disappeared into the wastes outside the city. FaZe was pretty sure she'd never see the cold feline woman again. And then there was Boris, the most tragic of all of them. Boris had her proximity alarm beeped frantically. Someone had entered the access tunnel to her hideout. She flipped the view over to the security cams and saw two Tyran security operatives moving down the hall, anonymous in their head-to-toe armor, stun prods at the ready. Behind them came an asset recovery specialist, the worst of Maximov's goons. One of the patrols dispatched to fi find her was about to hit the jackpot. FaZe mashed the panic button, which instantly set her terminal ablaze, frying its processors, then locked the door to the tunnel and switched her optical implant to record mode. They wouldn't be able to mine her data core for clues on where she'd hide next, but she was definitely going to make sure there was a re record of their attempts to kidnap her. She grabbed her few belongings and moved behind a, a heap of refuse, breaking line of sight from the door. In hindsight, a hideout with only one exit was probably a bad idea. Live and learn, she muttered to herself. At least I finally have company, one way or another. The door shuddered as the sec ops team rammed it. Faze tensed for a fight, letting the energy rise inside her. The door shuddered again, then burst inward. The moment they, they entered, she would clank. A grenade rolled into the room and began releasing gas with a hiss. Should have seen that coming, she grunted, and shot a series of pulse bolts from her hand into the smoke, then ran through the door and rolled beneath the inevitable sweep of the sec ops ton stun prods. She somersaulted forward, releasing a psychic flare as she rose, blinding all those around her. A stun prod jabbed at her ribs, sending her writhing to the floor. Clearly, they were not at all blinded. She must They must be, have been shielded against her psychic flare. Should have seen that one coming too, she, gr she ground out through clenched teeth. Both sick ops goomed emerged from the smoke, one reaching for her with cuffs while the other jabbed his stun prod toward her again. 
but there were some things they couldn't shield against. An energy lance burst from her hands in a torrent, pouring into the psychops with the prod. She switched aim to the cuff wielder. They both fell back into the smoke. Scrambling to her feet, she con concentrated the last of her lance on the nearer psychops. His armor would protect him from the injury, but underneath, he was a normal person, so the shock would at least knock him unconscious for a while. Faze hurled a volley of pulse boats in into the smoke and smiled as she heard the telltale ping of the bolts hitting armor. The two sick ops were down, but the more heavily armored asset recovery specialist was still out there, somewhere in the smoke. Faze stumbled down the hall toward the exit, but the ARS loomed ahead of her, blocking the door. He decided to play goalie. Finally, something I did see com some coming, she said, and tapped the activation switch on her left bracelet. A wall-mounted terminal sprouted lightning that arcs arced out toward a second terminal on the opposite wall, with the ARS caught between them. He spasmed briefly as the electricity burnt out the circuits in his suit and then toppled over. Like the Psychops, he'd be fine, but he wouldn't be able to move for a moment. She had about 60 seconds to get scarce. Faze scrambled over the inert ARS and ran into the wider basement of this abandoned building. She had several other hideouts staked out in the sewers, but Tyron would expect her to go ground there and would surely be sweeping the tunnels for her. Instead, she ran up the stairs toward the surface. The smart plan would be to go out into the city, mingle with the revelers, and get lost in the crowds of the Shadow's Eve celebration. Besides, she thought, I really, really want to. Tall, pockmarked, rock-slabbed buildings lined both sides of Ometa's narrow streets, leaving only a small slice of sky visible above, shimmering from the dome that covered the entire city. Faze stood in the mouth of a refuse-filled alley and prepared herself. She'd only been on the streets very late at night and never in a crowd. She took a deep breath and stepped out of the alley. Dominion Park stepped out before her, teeming with life. Many colored lights were strung from lampposts, buildings, and trees, throwing strange shapes and shadows across the street and hard-packed dirt alike. A pack of Ying Mei sped by on hover bikes, cat faces painted on their visors, while a pair of Omega PD sat in their cruisers, goggles down, either asleep or watching low-budget holovids. Some kids had set up amps on the dry fountain and were blaring mech slang songs into the dusk, jumping around and hooting. Everywhere, adults capered about in costumes of all types. Slumming rich girls pranced around in sexy wasteland costumes, while drunk salarymen lurched past in malink masks. Some clever man was even wearing a cardboard approximation of Howitzer's now famous Class D mech. A synthetic sporting a pink mohawk stepped, stopped and looked Faze up and down. He snapped his opticals up to reveal glowing red cyber eyes. Craig costume, he smirked. Good effort, chef. He snapped his opticals back down and strode off. Oh yeah? Faze called after him. Well, what's your costume? Poser? She raised her hand to give him a pulse bolt to the posterior for good measures, but Dr. Maximov's oft-repeating warning came back to her. The world will not accept you the way I do. To them you are, and always will be, a freakish abnormality of a girl. And you know what humans do to freakish abnormalities, yes? She lowered her hand. Better not let them see her for the freak she was. And anyway, the synthetic had been right. She did need a costume. A nearby street vendor had a few c options, and she quickly settled on a silver jacket with cat ears and a mask. An easy choice, as that was all she could afford, and she had nowhere to change anyway. Feeling somewhat safer in her costume, she moved into the park. It was everything her life for the last three months hadn't been. Crowded, busy, and alive. The look and feel and smell of all these people so close made her smile. A pair of creeps interrupted her smile the way they wanted and came sliding at her, smacking their wrist data paths closed. She brushed past them without missing a beat. She learned that confidence from Zinx, and these guys were minor leaguers in the sleaze department. Nowhere close to Howitzer. Various street artists and bands were performing in different parts of the park. Occasionally, passing citizens shook their data pads at each band's collective portal, transferring a few creds when they liked what they heard. 
during her time in the basement, Faze had started blogging about the music she encountered, trusting Zinx's word that her extranet terminal was untraceable. she known it was risky, but she had craved contact with the outside world so badly that it had seemed worth it. In a short time, she'd somehow earned thousands of followers, and her opinion had gained importance in the Ometa music scene. Now she could experience some of that music firsthand, a dream come true. She wandered from band to band, talk, taking it all in, being careful to remain unobtrusive. But then she heard a voice. It cut through the din, sharp and clear and beautiful. Faze followed the voice, away from the crowded center of Dominion Park. Near the unused eastern gate, a young woman stood by herself, singing loudly, unaccompanied by any instruments. She wore a halter top, shorts, boots, and not much else, possibly meant to be a costume. Faze moved closer, keeping a row of, of bushes between them so she could maintain a low profile. Singing and swaying, the young woman moved with complete confidence, as if defying anyone to say she did not belong. Her voice carried notes of long and loss, but above all, strength. The voice of someone who knew who she was. She seemed transported by the song, her mind far away. As Faze listened, she began to feel transported herself, imagining a world where she did not have to hide who she was, where she was accepted. Maybe even a world where she and this young woman were friends. Shinbi finished her song, slowly returning to herself. Nobody was listening, but that was okay. With no way to collect the invisible creds people were u here used for money, it didn't really matter. The way singing made her feel was reward enough. Of course, that feeling wouldn't fill her empty belly. She glanced down at Sluggo, her cat-shaped backpack, lying in front of her, open in case anyone had a more tangible way to show appreciation for his singing. She sighed. Apparently, no one did. Gathering up her pack, she looked back to s up to see a girl standing a short distance away, wearing cat ears, a mask, and a silver jacket. The girl had a furtive air, as if she had been right in the middle trying to hide when she'd stopped to sh stare at Shinbi. Hello there, Shinbi said with a smile. The girl looked around quickly, realizing that there was no one, nobody else nearby. Me, she asked. Oh, hi, yes, I liked your song. I'm glad somebody did, Shinbi chuckled. Oh, don't worry about the crowds, the girl said with sudden conviction. They just need shine and flash. Once you add some of that into your act, you'll be a star. You should already be a star. Why aren't you a star? She blushed, embarrassed by her outburst. I never thought about it, I guess. I'm not singing because I want to be famous or admired. I say thing because I love it. I could tell. It was kind of magical. Thank you, Shinbi said. But I thought nobody here believes in magic. What? Um, I'm Shinbi. Oh, hi, yes. I'm, I'm Faze. I mean, my name is Jeanette, but people back at the... The girl paused, then continued more quietly. People call me Faze. I don't mind it. Impulsively, Shinbi reached out and touched the girl's arm. It was obvious Faze was nervous, and it reminded Shinbi of her little sister back home. What a chore it had been to get that one to speak her mind. Nice to meet you, Faze, Shinbi said. Are you from the city? Faze blanched, as if the question was rude. Ometa? Yes, of course, she sputtered. Where else would I be from? She laughed nervously. The Wastelands? Ha <laughs> I, I don't know, Shinbi answered. I'm from very far away myself. I wanted to see what was out there, and now here I am. They both glanced down, and she realized she was still touching Faze's arm. Faze smiled awkwardly, and Shinbi squeezed her arm reassuringly before letting go. What's farther away than the wastelands? Faze asked shyly. Well, it doesn't matter. This place is bigger and stranger than anything I've ever seen, and I love it. Maybe you can show me around? The girl swallowed and then stammered. I really like that. I can pay for your tour guide services with songs as many as you like. Oh, you don't have to. I mean, I'm happy to. Th not that I don't want to hear your songs. I'd love that. I mean, Faze trailed off, looking back down, blushing so hard she looked like her face might catch fire. Shinbi laughed and gently mocked the girl's, mock punched the girl's shoulder. I think we're going to be good friends, Faze. 
Faye smiled brightly and for the first time looked completely at ease. Then she glanced off at the crowd and saw something she must not have liked because she stepped back suddenly, crestfallen. Shinbi, I'm sorry. I have to go. I promise I will check back here as soon and I will find you. Then you'll get your tourists. Promise. She spun on her heel and walked away. Surprised, Shinbi watched the girl walk off before she could say a word. Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. Please, ladies and gentlemen, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share it with the community, and of course, guys, subscribe. If you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, We've got a lot of other guides and stuff like that coming in the future. Again, check the video description for links to my website, merchandise store, Amazon affiliate link, and go and follow all of my social media right there. Till next time, like always, stay optimistic and positive.